All righty. Well, we continue in our journey this morning once again, and we're going to get into some important areas this morning in the walk of a believer, the Yehudim. And uh, so if you will, Brother JP, take us down to 15 this morning, and then we'll have a discussion about what we see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here it says, this is John chapter 3, starting in verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahusha by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Elohim, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except Elohim be with him. Yahusha answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the, the second time into the, his mother's womb and be born? And Yahushua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Ruach, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Elohim. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit or the rock is rock. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So it is every one that is born of the rock. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Yahusha answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is there that you see, brother, that sticks out to you and is speaking to you this morning? Wow, that's, it's amazing. I, I, you know, before the immersion, uh, just the last Shabbat, we, we read this um, and and I was just I was <laughs> it's he says marvel you know he's like it says marvel not but you know that I said unto you you must be born again but he talks about the the rock being so my question I guess it, it probably be formed as a question because he says the wind blows where it listeth and the thou hearest the sound thereof but canst not tell where it cometh and goes so is everyone that is born of the rock and. My, my initial thought, I guess, was that we can't tell, like, who has the Ruach. Like, the Ruach just, it just moves and people, like, it, I don't know, like, the power of the Ruach is just so mighty that, you know, from my, from my analyze of this portion, it seemed like the amazing thing was that the Ruach just moves and we, we just really... I guess to, to my, my mind is like, how do I, you know, to encapsulate, you know, the rock into me is, is just one person, but then the next man has it and the next man just, it was just an amazing thought about how the wind moves and, and how so many people can have the rock and, and it's just a beautiful, it's a beautiful um, sight, you know? So it just was exciting to see that, hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Hallelujah. Well, let me go back here and examine this a bit because there's a lot that's contained within this that really, as I was looking at this, was really showing me and speaking to me volumes. You know, um, the first we see that there's a, 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 a man that's a Pharisee um, that, that he, he, he came and he was interested in what he was seeing because he seen that there was something set apart, something special about this, this man. 
and, 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 and that he called a rabbi, a teacher, and that he recognized that he had to be from Elohim or from Yahuwah, because no one is able to do these signs or these things that, that he's doing without Elohim being with him. And that, that opened my mind to his, the, the name that he would be called or prophesied, uh, Emmanuel, that means that, you know, Elohim is with us or with him. So, so we see that this right here, this statement is a, is a declaration that he recognizes something deeper and much more profound in this man. And then Yahusha, immediately when he asks this question, Yahusha, uh, he, he responds where he says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above. Now, see, this is the, the, the thought that has gotten me for a long time. People say born again, but and that word can use be your, uh, used as again, but if we look at that the actual word that that is used in that in that sense, um, it's it's more profound to born from above. So if we look at this in a in a sense from born from above, now we're seeing that where we're being uh, born from or reborn from or into another uh, another realm or another. Uh, a, a deeper level, if you will, we're now becoming, uh, I think, fuller, uh, complete once this happens in this, once, once this moment happens. And so he says, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born from above, he is unable to see the kingdom or the reign of Elohim. So you can't even, you can't even recognize, and I see this in the world, that they do not, they're not able to see the things of, of Elohim. They don't recognize, even those that are in the churches that, that are in there, if they do not have the Ruach to teach them, this is what you're seeing the difference. And this is where he goes in and he begins to, 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 to explain to him this thing here, where he's telling him that a man that, uh, is uh, able to be born when he's old, is that that's the question the man asking me, how is this possible? And, it, and it's because he, he's looking and thinking on an earthly realm here about this is, okay, I got to go back into my mother's womb and be born a second time. And that's not what he was saying. So he had to clarify. He says, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water, which is from the womb, and of the Ruach, which is an, another re, uh, reborn or being born uh, from above, the Ruach from above, then you're able to enter into the reign of Elohim and, and able to see. And, and, and I think that if we understand that this is the transformation, this is the, being the separation between a, a, a fleshly being and a spiritual being uniting and becoming that, that fullness of Yahuwah and the, and the spiritual being being able to recognize, you know, who he is now in Yahuwah. Because he goes on, he says, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Ruach is Ruach. So he says, you don't need to marvel uh, 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 of what he said about being reborn from above, because it's another phase of, of our completeness or our oneness when, when we come into oneness with him. And we, he gives us the ability to have the mindset and the understanding to be able to see the word and to be able to comprehend what it says. And now to your question, where he says, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear that sound, uh, that you hear the sound of it. He's giving you an analogy here. You, you see the wind, you, you can feel the wind, so you recognize that, but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Ruach, okay? And, and so we see there's an analogy here that we don't know where, we know there's a change that takes place, but we don't necessarily know where it comes from or where it's leading us or where it's going to take us. Because once the Ruach takes up residency in you and, and you begin to be transformed, you begin to be moved by the Ruach where he desires you to be moved and where you are needed to be used and how he needs to be using you. So this is the this is the kind of the image that he's painting for us because the ruach we can't see it but we do recognize it we do know when it's and when it's with us and and when it leads us and it guides us we're all here because of this purpose because of what the ruach did it it, it drew us and it, and it placed uh, uh, this calling on our lives and fulfilled it 
you see, there's a the, the, the Ruach has done something that's very uh, miraculous because we don't, it's something outside of us that we can't take responsibility or credit for. So we can see this story as it's being um, laid out before us. We're getting, beginning to see how, how, the, how it is that Yahuwah is using the Mashiach and, and he's giving us the understanding, deeper revelation of what's transpiring and what we're going to be going through as we continue in this journey, as we see this begin to unfold for believers. You know, we're just starting the journey of this, you know, in, in, in this beginning of this walk to be able to see where is it taking us. And I believe as we continue to, to walk this out and we see the importance and the set apartness that is required of us, just like Yahusha. It's interesting where we see him here. He says, um, oh, hold on a minute. All right. Um, when he says this, and this is telling us something very profound here, and um, I was just going to start in 11. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, we speak what we know and witness what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. So he's, you know, this is something that we can take into heart when we are speaking these truths out to people. See, we're taking this, what we see, what we witness, what we know, and we're revealing it to others, but they can't receive it unless it is Yahuwah that draws them and calls them to receive this, to be able to open their eyes, to be able to see this. And if you do not believe what I spoke to you about earthly matters, then how are you going to believe what I speak about the heavenly matter? So he's telling you, you have to have the Ruach because you're only going to be able to understand and comprehend earthly things. And the spiritual things are of heavenly matters. So it's something that you can't comprehend. An average person cannot comprehend unless he uh, has the Ruach with him and it has drawn him in that sense. So it, it, uh, there's so much here as we can continue in this. And I know that there's uh, a lot that are, that's going to be covered here by Brother Rod and Brother Jadiel that's going to give us even more depth of this. But I just wanted to, to, to reveal that what I was seeing because I think it's so powerful. Brother Rod, what, is your, what are you seeing here and uh, your thoughts on this today? Shabbat shalom, brother. Shabbat shalom. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's really, really so much here. Um, so I don't know how much you want me to cover, you know, in this, these 15 verses, but there's a lot. So let's go for okay. it, brother. That's what we're here for. Let's knock this out and you know, get some understanding. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, JP had his hand raised. I just wanted to make sure his hand wasn't raised to something oh, you already said. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, yeah. turn that opportunity, and then we'll let you go at it. Go ahead, sure. brother JP. Uh, you know, no, my, my question. I was just wanted to talk about the rock and ask uh, more question on um, pertaining to baptism, um, and maybe you guys can both speak on that because you know we get into this portion where it says, I mean, what you had read in verse three. He cannot see the kingdom of Elohim unless he's born again. And then he kind of gives us a definition of what born again means. Um, and, and so my my question would, it goes to all three of you elders, is more in the sense of, does one have to be immersed in water to be to, to see the kingdom of Elohim? Is that what being born again means? Um, that, is that how you get the Ruach? You know, or can you just have the Ruach and, you know, because in, in, in the light of it, it's some people feel that you don't have to be immersed in water, but you can still have the Ruach. And so in all that, I, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, just want to see uh, what the thoughts were, because I'm sure that I'm not the only one who has that question, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, we'll deal with that. Um, uh, Rick, uh, Rick actually already answered that specifically what that's speaking to is regeneration. Um, so. When we look at, you know, what that means, one of the things Rick said um, is that, you know, you can't understand um, or even perceive uh, spiritual things 
uh, without being born again. So I'm just going to read some passages here. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, verse 10 says this, but Elohim has revealed them to us, right? Um, through his Ruach, for the spirit reaches all things. Yes, the deep things of Elohim. And then jump down to verse 13, it says, these things we also speak, not in words, words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Ruach, Holy Spirit, teaches comparing spiritual things was spiritual, but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself rightly judge, judged by no one. For who has known the mind of, of Yahuwah that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Messiah. So we see to Rick's point, there are things that you just can't know with the natural mind. Um, so when we look at, um, you know, John, he, he even says in, in verse five, nor enter the kingdom, right? So we know that clearly. So in Titus chapter three, it says this in verse five, it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he, had, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Ruach. So where you have this understanding of washing, washing always being a, a, a symbolism of a cleansing, right? So the baptism would be a symbol of what is taking place in your heart that the Ruach does. The revelation, the revealing, that is the rebirth. The washing, the actual baptism immersion is a representation of that which you have done publicly say, saying to the world, this is now um, what I believe. Um, and he, he mixes that with, with the, re, the, the regeneration being the new birth and the water being the original birth or the natural birth, um, because we know that David says this in Psalms. I'm telling you, it's a lot, it's a lot here. I'm just trying to walk through systematically. It says in Psalm 51. Psalm 51, verse, verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. So that is what you are at best as, as, as the first birth, as the natural man, meaning you can't enter by the first birth, but, but you first have to be born of water, which is the first birth, the natural birth, then of the Ruach, right? So that would be the regeneration that we read in Titus. Um, also, we know in Jeremiah 17, he says, the heart is deceitful and desperately, desperately wicked above all things who can know it, showing the depravity of man in his natural state. Um, Peter says this in chapter one, verse 23, he said, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of Elohim, which lives and abides forever. So we see the juxtaposition of the corruptible seed, the natural birth, and the incorruptible seed by the Ruach, by the changing of the heart, heart right? So the condition, the, the condition of this faith, of this new birth, is based in faith, right? It's based in Messiah, being crucified. We see that further on in the chapter um, when we read excuse me one second when we read verses uh, 
14. And 15 says, um, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, right? So in the beginning of the book, which we already discussed in chapter one, verses 12 and 13, it says this, uh, but as many as received him to, to them, he gave them the right to become children of Elohim to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of Elohim. So we see clearly the two distinctions. We see him answer uh, Nicodemus's question because he first asked the possibility of the birth then he asks the process of the new birth. How does this happen? How, how does this take place? Um, and we know that because the thief, the moment he believed, um, Yahushua said, today you will be with me in paradise. The washing took place by the Ruach in the heart. The, 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 the commandment to get immersed is something that we do to represent what we've already done in our hearts. So hopefully that answers the question of immersion. Um, I think that all believers should do it, but it's not a salvation issue because that has already taken place by the Ruach in your heart. Um, this, there's a lot more here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause here because I wanted to go into uh, verses 14 and 15, what he's saying in regards to Moses, but um, I want to give somebody else a chance to talk in the book of that. Did that answer your question, JP? Yeah, I mean, it, it did. And uh, so I guess I would ask my the second part of it and <laughs> my question. Um, we have a situation like in Acts 19, um, and it says in 19.1, it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Ruach HaKadosh since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be a, any Ruach HaKadosh, right? And he said unto them, unto when were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on Yahushua Mashiach. And so when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Yahushua Mashiach. And so, and then Paul laid hands on them, and the Ruach HaKadosh came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied, and uh, all the men were about 12. So that was my kind of like area where I was... I've been kind of led in the in the way, I guess, to say that I see the I see the way that someone may already have the ruach, but in this case, they were baptized to get the ruach, and so that was kind of where I, my thought was: is how, you know, when I seen this example, I was just like, wow, like they were baptized in the baptism of repentance, which is according to John, and. And then they didn't have the Ruach, though, until Paul, it says, laid his hands on them. And then they were, then the Ruach came upon them or came on them. So that was kind of my thought. And I, I you know, I know you, you and Brother Rick already spoke on it. So well, I, haven't, I, was, I haven't really yeah, given you my answer to your question yet. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I was waiting. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I believe that uh, according to scripture, and we see examples of it, but we see a good example in Acts, uh, Acts chapter 10, you know, where, you know, um, uh, we, there's other examples before that, but where they were baptized in the Ruach, and then they went and got water baptized. We see the, the opposite with what you just said. They were baptized in the water, but that didn't mean that they were baptized in, in the Ruach or in the spirit. There are two different things. One is receiving and being, that's the, that's the rebirth from above. That's that you got your physical birth, then you have your spiritual. They're two separate things. 
And the, set, the, the spiritual birth from above is when we receive the Ruach. That, that, that's when we have the spiritual rebirth or, or a, a, a beginning, if you will, at that point. That's the birth or the new birth of that new life, that new creation in the Ruach. So the, the water is just the expression of what you did, like Brother Rod said. You know, this is what I believe. This is the, this, I've already believed and I've already received. You know, once you believe in, in you trusting in him and you ask him to, uh, to give his Ruach to you, He's not going to deny you, Scripture says. Uh, he's not going to. He's going to give you what you ask for. So that's when you're, but you're not going to get that if you don't have a heart for de in desiring that. So he's only going to give it to those that are truly have a heart for him anyways. You know what I'm saying? So, but he knows the person's heart. He really knows their true intention. Are they really playing this and all of that type of stuff? You know, that that's beyond us. But that's when you really receive it. Then the water is a separate expression that lets everybody know, hey, this is my what I believe in the name and all, and my life is now focused on him and committed to him, devoted. I am now his. I belong to him. You know, now he's got me on a new course where I have a renewed thinking, a renewed mind, a renewed understanding. You're a new creation in him. So the old man has died. That guy that, that before that, he don't exist no more. Even though he looks like you, he's not the same guy. Or the same gal. It's a different, a different creation comes in and begins to blossom. And just as a, as a child's birth, I think the, the pace in which we grow are a lot faster in the spiritual if we're connected and plugged into the, the right source, but then a child, you know, growing up in the physical. But you can see that the, there's two different uh, births or, or two different creations happening. I, I, I want to say, I guess, one is a physical, one's a spiritual. And that's when the fullness comes when when you when you have the ruach come upon you, and that's when everything begins to happen. You know, begin to understand things and comprehend. You know, that things that didn't make sense to us. I can tell you, I I walked in the church for a long time, and I you know, not that I wasn't being led by the ruach because I believe I was uh, all the way until this point. But I can tell you, when I received the ruach for real. When I, when I get an understanding and that came upon me and the same thing happened with my mother, when, when we received that, that's when the real change happened in our lives. You know, we got set free from the bondages and things and even the un misunderstandings that I had of, of certain scriptures. All that stuff began to get clarified and it was, it was only after that happened. But, you know, I believe that that's the difference in there. And I think that's kind of what your answer or your question was. Did that help uh, answer that a little bit better, maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it does. It's, I think what in this portion, um, it's the whole, it's the whole, you know, what we see. I wouldn't say it's a whole idea. It's what we see Paul doing. Paul lays his hands on them and then they received the Ruach that day. And that, that's what kind of was like one of those areas where I was like, wow, like, you know, so when I, 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 for me, like, you know, since, you know, since I've been asked to immerse people that I've taken on that same um, position where we come out the water and then we, we, we pray for them and we put our hands on them. I'm um, not on their head or nothing, but you know, I, I, we stand together and, and in one like a cord and in a cot and and then we pray for that what i see what paul is doing so i just want to make sure that we were on the right uh mindset by doing that and what we see here that that was kind of where at the end result that's my the answer i want to you know try to find for my you know my own walk walk so hallelujah so, yeah, yeah i'm gonna I'm 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 let uh uh Yell go in a second but i just wanted to to the passage you 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 brought out there were two things that were going on. One was the, the baptism that John was doing to repentance, right? To, to turn back to the straight and right way, to turn to Torah, right? But, but Paul was asking something different. Have you received the Ruach? Have you been born again? And the understanding happens before the baptism because the baptism, the actual immersion representing, like Rick said, that the old man going down, the new man coming up is what it's represented. But you have to understand that before doing it. 
So the Ruach is received before the baptism. You're accepting the baptism, the immersion, because you first believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Messiah. And that is what um, um, born again is speaking of in that sense. So just wanted to kind of clear up what I was saying. Uh, Brother Jalio. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, uh, that's what I was going to emphasize on, uh, the fact that immersion has to be of the water. One, because Yahusha did it. Yahusha not only was immersed, but he immersed others in the water. I believe it's a continuation of what John was teaching about repentance because Messiah also emphasized on saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the understanding of repentance has to be demonstrated in the immersion of the water. It's not, it's not our own decision saying, hey, I'm with Yah, so let me go in the water. It's a command from our master to go in the water. So the master gave us that instruction to go in the water. Therefore, it's a matter of commandment. It's a matter of obedience to our new master. Now, when we're born again, we receive the Ruach. So the water represents the immersion of the water, which the Messiah was doing. You can see that in, in John chapter four. But the, the Ruach comes upon us, like what Brother Rod said, based off of understanding. It's the renewing of the mind. Matter of fact, if you look at John chapter one, verse 12 and 13, it says that uh, those who uh, receive the Messiah, that he gives them power to become children of Elohim. Then he says, which are born not of the will of man, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the blood, but by Elohim we are born. So that means that our, our transformation, our will is now changed. Our desires are now changed. Our understanding is now changed. So Romans chapter 12 says that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. The Ruach is bringing that transformation, that renewing of the mind. But if you do not understand, like you read, uh, Brother JP, in Acts chapter 19, if you do not understand, you cannot receive the Ruach HaKadosh for the simple fact that the Ruach HaKadosh, the, the fruit of the Ruach HaKadosh is a transformation of understanding, is a transformation of life is a transformation of will. So you can receive that transformation before you get immersed, but the immersion is based off of obedience to the instruction of the master. So there's no, there, there can't be a, um, uh, I don't have to get immersed. It has to be one of those really serious, every commandment is based off of one of those really serious situations that we can create of how you're not able to do something. And Yah definitely understands those drastic situations where you are unable to do so. But when you are able, when you are transformed, you're going to see that Yahushua immersed people in water. And you're going to say, this is what he commands me to do. I will immerse in water. That's a command. You know, it's, it's not a, uh, I don't believe that it's saying that if you are born from a woman and born of the Ruach, because there's no time in which a person is not going to be born of a woman. Everybody is born of a woman, but everybody is not born of the water. Everyone is not, uh, and born meaning just brought forth. When you go in the water and you come out of the water, that's the word born is actually, that's what it means to be brought forth. Um, to be, it's the same word as being brought forth from the womb. It's the same word to be brought forth from the water. And it's also the same word to be brought forth from the grave. So born is just there to emphasize being coming out of. So you have to now come out of the water and then you have to also come out from the spirit. So the spirit has to engulf you and then bring you forth to do what you're supposed to do. Just like how you come out of immersion in Romans 6 says that when you come out of the water, that you are a new person, that you walk in a newness of life. Um, so I believe that the immersion and the, and the laying on of hands, we don't see the laying on of hands all the time, but I think that it's a really good practice to lay on of hands and pray afterwards as well in order to emphasize on that. But before you even get to that point, like what Brother Rod said, there has to be a level of understanding of, a, of that complete surrender and transformation to your master and his instructions. And, and changing from what you used to do 
to now doing what what y'all wants you to do. Um, and I hope that I hope that made sense. Thank you, brother. Yeah, that that you you touched on a few points that I was going to bring forth, but uh, so there's good clarity there. I hope that does help you, brother JP, bring even more clarity to your question. Hallelujah, uh, brother Josh. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, family. I uh, just wanted to read a scripture in First Peter chapter three uh, to to reinforce this. Um, let me get to it real quick. Okay, so. Okay, I'm going to read First Peter chapter 3 from verse 18. It actually should be further up, but I'm going to read from verse 18 to 21. It says, For Hamashiach also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to Elohim, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the rock, by which also he went and preached unto the Ruachoth in prison, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of Elohim waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. And here's the key verse. The like figure, whereunto even baptism does also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward Elohim by the resurrection of Yahusha HaMashiach. I just wanted to add all that in there. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. It's good to get more word, more clarity, more understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All righty. Um, as we continue to look at this section of scripture, uh, is, let me go ahead and pull this up here again so we can kind of look at this. Now, Brother, Brother Jadio, I know that um, – you were speaking on the immersion part of this, the water baptism, but there's a whole lot in this section that we've uh, been uh, reading in this section up until 15. Is there anything that you'd like to uh, discuss about this area since you haven't had a chance to really discuss this area? Well, yeah, there's a, um, there's like, it's like Brother Rod said, there's a, there's quite a few in that, um, in that amount of verses. Um, so one one thing, I, I'm gonna just uh, not really go so long. I'm gonna just point out a few things. Um, uh, the, the aspect of, of verse six, uh, John three, verse six, Uh, it says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Ruach is Ruach. And um, there was a, uh, there's an emphasis on your identity, right? Your identity and what you identify with in scripture. Because what you identify with is also a matter of, of belief as well, because we would have to identify according to what Yah says we, we are rather than... Um, you know what the masses say we are. So there's this there's this aspect of of Paul referring to us as uh, holy ones or set apart ones. Or in some verses it's called saints. Um, there's also uh, the understanding that many people refer to themselves as sinners even after they're walking according to Yah Yah's way. When you look up uh, the reference of sinners when it comes to a person who is following Yah, it is referred to as past tense. You know, um, it says, while you were sinners, Messiah died. While you were his enemies, Messiah died. Um, Messiah, uh, Paul always references saying, this is the works of the flesh, but you are of the spirit. And I think that a lot of people don't believe that. I think a lot of people really don't believe their identity because of the feelings that they have, the doubts that they have, the insecurities that they have. And I just want to encourage everyone that when you are born of the Ruach, you are Ruach, you are spiritual beings. You are no longer uh, restricted to the flesh, restricted to this earth, restricted to the sin that you once were a part of. You are now have, you now have dominion. You now conquer over sin and this is what Yah was trying to get Cain to understand when he says that sin is knocking at the door but you shall rule over it the 
when he said sin was knocking at the door, he was talking about his flesh. His flesh was rising up, but you should conquer it. You should rule over that flesh. You are now the ruler. Before you were with Yah, the flesh was the ruler over you. But now that you've received the Ruah, it gives you the ability to rule over the flesh. And now you are not flesh. You are Ruah, according to, to verse 6. And that's what it means to be born again. Uh, going back to John 1, uh, verse 12 and 13, it says, you know, let me, let me go to it so I won't say the wrong verse. So it says in verse 12 and 13, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of Elohim, to them that believe on his name, his authority. It says, which were born, not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man. But of Elohim, your will is no longer subject to your blood, to your will, to your flesh. It is now subject to the Ruah. But you have to believe that in order to receive that strength. It's just like what JP was saying about uh, Acts 19. These people had to believe in Yahusha in order to receive the Ruach HaKadesh, the Ruach of, of, the, of the Father through Yahusha. So this... That's with every aspect of truth, especially in regards to our, our identity. We tend to focus so much more on what Yahusha is, which is no problem. Yahusha is this. Yahuwah is this. But then there's this issue with who are we? Oh, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. You know, he says, be strong. Be of good courage. Oh, no, no, no. You know, I'm not strong. Oh, no, I'm not spiritual. I'm a sinner. Oh, no, I'm just, I'm just low. I'm just that when when Yahusha says I'm bringing you up to high places by faith, you sit with me on high places in Ephesians. It says so. There's this mindset that Paul is trying to extend to everyone else. There's an appreciation to Yahusha when you say when Paul said I am the chiefest of sinners. He wasn't referring to his current state as if he is currently sinning crazy. What he was saying was he is the chiefest. He is the to, in his mind, he is the most in need of Yahushua. He is the most in need of his strength. He is the most in need of his power. And this is how we all ought to think. But to say that we are the same, identify ourselves with the same characteristics as we were before we even met Yahushua, that is not what Yahushua is telling us to do. He's telling us to associate ourselves with the Ruach. And he says, those who are born of the flesh is flesh. That's what they are. But if you are born of the Ruach, you are Ruach. Don't say that you are flesh. Don't limit yourself to just the flesh anymore. You know, and this is what gives you reliance and dependency on Yahushua's power rather than us trying to do our best. And then that's it. Our best without the Ruach is nothing. Our best with the Ruach equals success and victory and perfection. He brings in the rest that we need to bring us all the way. It's not we just do our best and then fail and it's okay with Yah. We do our best and then his Ruach brings us all the way to victory. You know, so I'm just, I just wanted to point that out. This is, I believe this is the major emphasis of being born again that many of us did not have when we were first immersed. You know, especially me, I did not have this understanding. So therefore I continued in my ways in the flesh, identifying with the flesh, thinking that I could live in the flesh, but I was immersed. It was, it was basically like a horrible, representation of what immersion is but immersion is much greater much stronger much more powerful and i just wanted to bring that up well that's powerful what you just said there brother uh, i'm really glad that you said what you said because it, it does bring everything home for us there there's things that people say like you said we got to get it we got to be start checking what we say what we allow to come out of our mouths the things that we declare like you said you know we hear these things said in the, uh, out there in the world that, you know, there's, uh, we can't be perfect because there's only been one that's perfect. Well, if you look at what scripture says, it tells us that we need to be perfect as he's perfect. That doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect right away, but you got to know that if you have the intention to do the things that the Ruach is leading you to do and that is required of you, then you will be perfected along the way. And at some point, you will reach that, that, that state of perfection when Yahushua comes and perfects us all, you know, when he, when he removes this, this veil of, of sin from our heads. 
you know, but right now we're walking in that same power and that same authority to, to be able to walk contrary to the flesh. Like you said, the power of the flesh doesn't have no power over us no more. We are under the headship of Yahushua and Yahuwah, and we have the Ruach in us, and we have to make the decision to surrender like uh, to their will, to the will of the Father, so that we do that which is which is required of us. And trust that we are of the Ruachs, therefore we have the authority, we have the power that has been given to us that Yahushua says is ours, you know, that we will do what he did in even greater things. That's very powerful when we get ourselves into the place where we understand who we are as a child of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Brother brother Rod, I see your chance now. You got some more stuff to pull out. Go ahead, brother. Let us know what you had. I know you said there were some things you weren't going to cover at that point, but uh, we might as well tidy up while we're here. Yeah, no, I, 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 um, I really enjoyed uh, Jadiel breaking down that whole understanding of flesh and humanity, um, the corruptness of the flesh and, and what the Ruach does. Earlier, we read that same passage in John um, chapter 1, 12, and 13, um, <clears throat> but bringing it forth through that verse and, and the way he explained it was, was really good. Um, and like you said, brought brought that whole understanding home of what we're doing, you know, and what we need to understand when we're getting immersed. I kind of wanted to, to slow down a minute, though, because I, there's, I think there's an element of this that we're not looking at, and, and that is who Nicodemus is, right? Because there's a, there's a specific purpose in, in, in why this man is here, but also what Yahushua says to him and what he's referring to for, for, for his understanding. So Nicodemus obviously was a Pharisee, um, rich man also, um, but he was more than just a Pharisee. He was um, the teacher because in, 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 in verse uh, nine, it says, Nicodemus answers and said to him, how can these things be? Yahushua answers and said to him, are you the teacher? And that's a definite article meaning the main teacher, the one that teaches, you know, in this establishment, you know, the Pharisees believed and were different than the Sadducees. The Pharisees believed in the inspiration of the Old Testament. They believed in the coming of the Messiah. They believed in the, the miracles and the resurrections, in the resurrection rather. And the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, the Sadducees. That's why they were sad, you see? So just thought I'd... <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> but specifically, he, he's pointing, he says, do you not know these things? Or why, if you are the teacher, do you not know these things, right? And he's pointing him to, I believe, what, we, what he would have known or should have known out of Ezekiel 36, which describes it in verse uh, 25. It says this, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness, from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit within you and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my ruach, my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you will dwell in the land that I give to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your Elohim. That is specifically described in, in Romans with what Gadiel was talking about earlier, Romans 6, the dead man walks no more, the new man now lives. Yahushua pointing him to that saying that he should understand this. You know, how do you not understand these things? So important that it was the teacher's teacher that was coming to him that was getting uh, these things explained uh, is very important you know for our understanding as well um, because you know these men also changed some of them changed parts Paul being one of them right um, 
the other thing was uh, verses uh, 13 and 14. Um, no one has ascended uh, to heaven. Um, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. And as, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. And then again, it goes on that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So we have here a reference to Moshe and, and what he did in the wilderness. So I just wanted to take a look and try to understand what's going on here and why Yahushua uses this as a description um, as, or as a reference point. Um, Numbers chapter 21, and we're familiar with this passage um, because this is when the bronze serpent was introduced starting in verse four, and I'll just read. It says, then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go down, to excuse me, to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And the people spoke against Elohim and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is no food and no water and our souls loathe the worthless bread. So they're complaining about everything <laughs> that they have. So Yahuwah sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moshe and said, we have sinned for we have spoke against Yahuwah and against you. Pray to Yahuwah that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then Yahuwah said to Moses, make a fiery serpent or make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten when he looks at it shall live. So Moses said, uh, made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and it was if the serpent had bitten anyone, he would look onto the bronze serpent and live. So Yahushua uses this, um, and I think there's something here to understand in regards to the symbol, the emblem of this, of the very thing that was killing them when they looked upon it, they were healed. And he likened it to, to himself being lifted on a tree. The very thing that was accursed in the Hebrew life, being cursed on a tree, the very thing that Yahushua was gonna do and what they believed on was gonna save them in that same way. Um, so I just wanted to kind of point that out. The tree at Golgotha being the same as the serpent on the stick um, and Yahushua bringing that out. Um, because we know the second Corinthians says that he was made sin for us, he who knew no sin. So the very thing that was causing them to die, the very thing that causes us to die, sin, Yahushua was made. We look upon him. We believe upon him. We are saved. So just wanted to point that out in those two verses um, to kind of give reference point to what Yahushua was saying and pointing back to Moshe and Numbers. That's powerful when you think about that, what he's saying there. You know, if you think about the serpent or, you know, representing sin, and that's what's biting you and making you die. And now in this reference, uh, uh, Musha is lifting this up so that the people can see the sin. And once they see the sin, they recognize it. That's what's going to save them. So they recognize. And now correlating that, like you said, with, with Yahusha and understanding that that sin that's been lifted up and that we realize now that it's been brought to our attention is, is now... He is healing us because we're looking to him as the conqueror that come, overcomes that sin that's been lifted up before us. That's powerful, brother. I mean, I, I just, uh, that's very deep when you really think about the context of everything that he's been talking about and how, he, how he's equating this 
with being born again and in that same context, you know, uh, and, and we understand because of our understanding of the scriptures and stuff about what sin is and, 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 and how it destroys, how it kills us, you know, that's, that's powerful. I never really seen that before. That's good stuff. Uh, Brother Jadiel, anything else you'd like to uh, bring out before we continue? Oh, uh, yeah, I like the just to emphasize on what, what Brother Rob was mentioning. Well, bef the before verses, the um, uh, verse 12 and 13, where he was where he said, uh, no man hath ascended up into heaven, the Shamayim, but he that came down from the Shamayim, even the son of man, which is which is in the Shamayim. So I was uh, looking at this. And verse 12, I'm sorry, I read 13. Verse 12 emphasizes on what 13 was talking about. It says, if I told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And then he says, no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. And um, this is an emphasis of Yahushua bringing down grace and truth and how um uh, you, if you notice how the law was given to Israel, it was Moses ascended up and then he descended back down with the law. But uh, the most high is the up in this situation. And the son of man is the one that goes up to the most high and brings down the truth of heavenly things to us. Um, it makes mention of this in uh, um, where he says where Moses was uh, John 1. 17 where it says uh the law came by moses but grace and truth by uh yahushua messiah meaning that the moses went up brought down the law but yahushua went up and brought down grace and truth understanding of that law um we also see in proverbs 30 verse 4 where it says who have ascended and descended referring to the time of creation who went up to yahuwah and brought down the, the creation plans. It was Yahushua that brought down the creation plans from Yahuwah. Um, we also have uh, uh, Deuteronomy 30, where Moshe was like, uh, don't say to yourself, who shall ascend for us to bring the word down? It, it says, is this near you, even in your mouth and in your word? Why is it near you? It's because Yahushua is the one that ascended and descended and brought down heavenly things. So this is what it's referring to here when he came down and he's bringing and he did not never spoke of himself, meaning that everything that he had was from the father. That's why he says, who have ascended, who went up to the most high and brought down this truth to you. You know, it is the, there is nobody that did that except for the son of man. You know, uh, so I, I just wanted to point that out. That is not an emphasis necessarily on re resurrection in this in this context is talking about how come you can't understand heavenly things you know nobody ascended except for me i'm bringing down heavenly things for you to understand you know um i am a heavenly thing actually yahushua is a heavenly thing you know so i, I was just uh pointing that out um you know in here because it's, it's used a lot to refer to nobody resurrected but it's, it's, not, it's not saying who has descended into the grave and then ascended in a resurrection. It says who ascended first and then brought and then descended, you know, so who went up to the most high first and then came down. It is only Yahushua that went up to the most high and brought down to Moses grace and truth. It was Yahushua that went up to the most high and brought down uh, life. And then it's Yahushua that went up to the most high and came down with himself. And brought himself the sacrifice to, to take away our penalty, you know, so everything is, uh, and then even now today, it is Yahushua <laughs> that ascended to the Most High and brought down the Ruach HaKodesh, you know, so um, this is what, I believe this is what it's referring to here. Thank you for that. That's definitely uh, some more information out. You keep, uh, you know, something's caught my attention. You uh, is in, in Proverbs. Does it say who has ascended and descended, or does it go the other way? But yeah, it's, um, in Proverbs, it's, 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 I believe it says ascended. Let me let me pull it out. Uh, Proverbs thirty 
verse 4, it says, who have ascended into heaven or descended. And then it talks about gathering the wind in his fist. So we know that Yahuwah created all things through Yahusha. So it was Yahusha that had to go to Yahuwah for the plans and then execute those plans. Well, uh, the reason I bring that out is because uh, last week we, 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 we read uh, about how uh, Jacob's, uh, you know, his trouble and uh, the, the ladder that ascends and descends again. And Brother Rod said, you know, that means that the Malachim are here uh, and, and are going up and coming back down. And it's the same phrasing that, that is used in that. Um, that's pretty interesting when, when we think about that. That caught my attention when you were saying that, because it's like, okay, he ascended and descended. What is, is does that mean he, he's originated here? And is ascending up uh, and then comes back down. Uh, I just want to get your thoughts on why is it they're using ascending and descending instead of descending and ascending? You know what I'm saying? Right. Because, you know, we're looking at the Shamaim and then we're looking at where the most high is. And I think there's a reason why he's referred to as the most high, <laughs> because it's not necessarily in the same area as everything else in the Shamaim. Uh, but you have to, it's kind of like a king. You have to go to the king. He's in a separate chamber. It is Yahushua that goes to the king and brings out the orders to the people, whether it be the angels or whoever it is. Um, even when you look at uh, Revelation 1 1, it says the revelation of Yahushua Messiah, which Elohim gave to him. And then Yahushua gave it to John by sending his angel. So if he was going to send the an angel, he would just give it to the angel if they're all in the same place. But he doesn't. He gives it to Yahusha, and then Yahusha comes and gives it to the angel. And then the angel comes and brings it down to, the, to John. So there has to be not necessarily another Shamaim, but another area where he is the most high. Um, yeah, there are angels that cover, but there are also angels that take orders. And Yahusha is the one that gives the order to from Yah to the angels to bring to us, you know? So I, that's what I'm, I'm seeing that, that same thing now, you know, where Yahushua is the one that goes up to the Most High and brings down to Moshe grace and understanding of that Torah. And it, in a representation, Moshe goes up the mountain to receive it and then brings the Torah down with the understanding to the people, you know? So I look at it the same way. That's pretty, that's pretty deep. I'm glad you brought that clarity out because it now gives me a different view of what you're, when you're saying ascending and descending, it's not starting point isn't earth, but the starting point is it's Shamaim. He's ascending to the most high, like going into his throne room and the, where he is sitting on his throne, right? And then he's getting mm -hmm. that and, and delivering that, wh whichever means that he uses, whether it's a mullikim or whether, you know, the I don't know, however he delivers, whatever he's needed to deliver. That's interesting. That, that, that shows me the order and the structure, even in the, in the, the, within the kingdom of how things are established, you know, in a, in a certain chain of command, if you will, brother Rod, you know, what I'm talking about uh, that chain of command that you have to go up or down, you know, within that. So uh, thank you. That, that helped a lot, brother Rod. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. That, that uh, the distinction is important um, between Yahushua and the Malachim because that was specifically speaking of that that dream that Jacob, right, and what was being revealed to him. But I wanted, I, I want to, I want to pull back because I want everybody to understand the importance of what Jadiel said in regards to John one seventeen because that passage is is specifically used to show a different dispensation of, 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 of uh, law and grace. Um, and what Jadiel just explained, law and grace came at the same time. There is no separation between that was, the, you know, the Old Testament was the dispensation of the law, and now we're in the dispensation of grace with Yahushua. Um, it, it all happened at the same time and we need to understand that. We need to be able to answer that question because it's, it's, it's very div divisive in the belief systems um, that surround scripture, right? And it separates people from understanding that Torah is a necessary part of their walk. 
versus it not it no longer needing to be necessary. So that's a, that's a very vital verse um, that Jadiel just broke down in regards to Yahushua and Moshe at Sinai, giving law and grace and peace for that matter at the exact same time. Hallelujah. All righty, let's go ahead and uh, continue on with uh, the reading of John 3.16. Um, let's just chop it up here at uh, 21, and then we'll finish it out after we uh, look at this and examine this a bit. So, Brother JP, some of the favorite scriptures mm. people like to quote right here. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go to 16 to 21, correct? Yes. It says, okay, John chapter 3, starting in verse 16, for Yahuwah, or for Elohim, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Elohim sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Elohim. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest. That they are rot in Elohim. Hallelujah. Hmm. Wow. What you get? What you got? Well, it, well it's just so powerful. Uh, and there's more scriptures, I'm sure, that I can. Uh, there is another example. I got a, I, I, it's in my, I, I know it's in my mind right now, but um, verse 19, it, it's, um, it's, a, it's a heavy one. It's a hard one. It's a heavy one because he says, and well, he says men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So then he goes on to say in verse 20, for everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And so I always, again, it's just there's an area where it's like, whoa, like either you're going to be cold or hot. You know, you're going to be one of those areas, you, you know, you can't be of the light but walk in darkness. Um, well, I, I guess you can't be of the light and walk in darkness because you could be the light in the darkness, but you can't be, you know, can't have both feet, you know, one feet in on one side and one feet on the other side. And and so it, I guess it's from what I'm seeing is it's um, edification to watch ourselves, to, you know, make sure we examine ourselves. And even when we think we're walking uh, correctly there's a lot to see in scripture that make sure you're walking correctly because you could think you're walking correctly but because of you know pride um, things can come in where we where we're still walking in some type of darkness and that's still not walking in pure light hallelujah hallelujah that's uh that's very powerful when we when we look at this and we think about what it's saying to us here I, I just uh, I'm looking at this where we think about Elohim or or Yahuwah. You know, he he so loved, and I want to look at that word world because uh, that's got that's not a, got a certain connotation here. Is he talking about all his creation? Is he speaking the world as far as the people of the world? You know, that that's a that's a word that, that I want to draw into a little bit here because it's saying that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone that believes in him should not perish. And that's what we were talking about earlier, you know, a, a baptism, believing. And what does that believe, that believing in him, what that leads us to? It takes us to the, you shall not perish. Now, we've done these studies in the past about what does that mean? You know, this everlasting torment, hell, if you will. And we see that we, he's talking about here is when we get to that place of judgment at the end when things are judged when all uh, everyone is judged and all things are judged 
that those that are judged uh, not righteous and do not have the, the belief uh, in the Mashiach, in the son of Elohim, they are going to perish. They're not going to exist no more. They're going to be terminated. And then the gift of life is for those that, that do believe and they have everlasting life. For Elohim did not send his son into the world to judge the world, even though he is going to judge. But that's not the purpose he's come that he was sent for. He was sent that the world, okay, might be saved through him. That's, that's a lot of love right there, not only from Yahuwah, but also Yahusha. He had to also love to be able to commit and to surrender himself to be in this position, to be this chosen one. He had to know what was the ramifications, what was expected of him. As we continue in 18, he says, he who believes in him is not judged. So for us believing in him, we're going to escape that judgment. But believing in him requires that we also live according to him and his ways, the ways that he's taught and led. If you go outside that, you're going to be back into that judgment at some point if it's not uh, repentant, if you're not repentant of it. And as we're going to see this as we continue to look at this, what he's saying here. But he who does not believe is judged already. So we see that those that are in the world that do not possess the Ruach are already being, they're already judged. Their, their destiny is already, already, because he has not believed in the name. So if he perishes without that, uh, belief and 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 I believe walking uh, is the other part of it. It goes beyond just the belief. You know, it's all what's contained within believing. You know, believing is what he came to impart in us as believers to be that example to show us how we are to be as he was. And then you know, there's so much here about the the the, the, the part that you were talking about, brother JP, in this 19. And he goes on to say, this is the judgment. Think about that. This is the judgment that the light has come. Yahushua is that light. He's came into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light because they like their evil ways. You know, when if, for those that, that are not of Yahuwah, not they, they don't have any desire for him because they're all caught up in the desires of this world and the flesh. The desires of this flesh, they don't want to come and get exposed, but that's what happens when you bring light, when you bring truth, it exposes the evil matters, it brings enlightenment to those things which are in error. Therefore, it exposes our shortcomings, those things that are that need to be changed in us. It puts that spotlight on us, and those dark things they stand out. You know, those evil things, they stand out because they're not of him. But the one thing, but the one doing the truth comes to the light. That's powerful. So that his works are clearly seen. Yeah? So that your works are seen that have been wrought in Elohim. That's powerful because we're seeing something of so much love here that that's being shown to us and the mercy, but he's also telling us the reality of the truth that things are going to be difficult at judgment time for those that don't know. Hallelujah. Uh, see, uh, Yahara, Yara, Yara. There we go. Shabbat Shalom. Do you have something you'd like to add? Yes, uh, Shabbat Shalom to all. Um, yes, um, just wanted to go back to uh, the verses um, having to do with um, ascending and descending. And um, just want to offer this verse as well. Uh, Romans 10, verses uh, 5 and 6, uh, verse 5. For concerning the righteousness that is by the law, Moshe or Moses writes, the man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith or belief says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? Brother Shamayim, 
that is to bring Messiah down? Or who will descend into the abyss that is to bring Messiah up from the dead? And see one other verse, Galatians 2, 16. Um, well, starting with 15, we who are Yahudim by birth and not Gentile sinners know that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by faith, belief in Messiah Yahusha. So we too have believed in Messiah Yahusha that we, that we may be justified by faith or belief in Messiah and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, no one will be justified." End of quote. And so in putting these together, um, you know, and, and even in what we're talking about now, as far as the, the light and darkness, the darkness uh, speaking of life in the flesh, you know, that there were those who still wanted to be self-righteous, and to um, say that they could go and bring down righteousness, you know, um, of their own accord. And scripture says, that's not so. That's not able to be done. And so I just wanted to offer that as well. Thank you, sister. Thank you for more scriptural clarity. Definitely what we need. Comp be confirmed by two or three witnesses and let that matter be established. So we see more and more confirmation. Hallelujah. All right, Brother Rod, or Brother uh, uh, Jadiel, anything you'd like to discuss about this next section of John 3, 16 through 21? Um, no, I think, I think, uh, <clears throat> I, I liked the, the understanding of verse 19, um, in regards to, let me see, it says, um, and this is condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So um, this definitely ties into the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Um, Psalms 1, when it talks about evil uh, men and uh, it talks about you know, the understanding of that is that these are men that when they can't find enough evil, they invent it. Um, their, their, their evil um, is their trade. Um, but it uses the word love before, which means they were totally given over to it. You know, and, it, and it's a decision, it's a choice because we, we read that same kind of understanding when it comes to those that believe not. You know, it's not just not believing who Yahushua is. It's purposefully, willfully, actively, consciously not believing and disobeying, going against it when you know the truth and turn it into a lie. Romans chapter uh, one talks about that, right? Turn the truth into a lie uh, because they deny creation and the creator. Because when you do that, you can make up your own philosophy purposefully and willfully knowing that there's a creator but willfully so all of those things fit in that understanding with um, those that practice evil those that willfully disobey um, but you guys covered everything else pretty good so that's that's all i got oh yeah all righty brother uh jadiel anything else before we continue the our reading Oh, no, uh, you know, I think that it's a uh, it's self-explanatory. I do believe that um, when it says the world, it was it was referring to all of all humans, all people, um, and that uh, 
Yah was sending his son not not to 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 come for the righteous. He said he was not coming for the righteous. That Yahusha said. So he specifically was coming for the state of the world. The scripture is clear. It says no one is righteous. No, not one. So the world itself as a whole is in, is in need of this, this um, salvation. You know, so Yah loved the world in the unrighteous state that it was in, that he sent his son in order to deliver them from that righteousness, which is what verse 17 said, unrighteousness, sorry, which is what verse 17 says, for Elohim sent his son, sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Um, he that believe on him is not condemned, but he that does not believe is condemned already. This is referring to uh, those who have heard the word and do not believe uh, because it, it, if this was talking about those who have not heard the word then it wouldn't say in uh first corinthians 5 that we can't judge the world it says that we don't judge the world yah judges the world but if this was a clear cut referring to every single person then we will be able to to express that judgment on the world, but we, we can't, we're unable to, because he judges the world according to whatever he he's going to do. You know, those who are ignorant of the truth, those who were in times where the truth wasn't available to them, or they were being, you know, restricted to, to hear the truth, you know, whatever it may be, uh, there's a lot of situations in which the truth was withheld from the people and forced, the people were forced in the opposite direction. So uh, is he just going to condemn them already because they never heard of the name in order to believe? No, he, he's going to judge them in a different way. He's going to judge them according to what he sees the world is. But our concern is not the world. When we look at 1 Corinthians 5, it, it says that we're supposed to judge the matters amongst ourselves. You know, uh, verse 12 and 13 of 1 Corinthians 5 says, For what have I to do to judge them that are without do not you judge them that are within, but them that are without Elohim judges. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person, meaning that person that calls themselves a brother and then turns away from Yah's ways to do their own thing. That's the wicked person. That's the wickedness in the evil that Yah is referring to. You know, but uh, as far as ignorant, like people in the world who haven't even heard of it, I, I don't believe that they will be judged the same way. I do believe judgment will happen, but Yah says that we don't judge the world. Yah will judge the world, meaning like those outside of those who know the truth. See, those who know the truth are in two categories. Those who know and believe and follow, those who know and believe and don't follow. And then you have the world, the, those who are ignorant, who have not heard and died not hearing, maybe perhaps. Uh, but those are individuals that we don't we don't touch as far as declaring a judgment on them because Yah is the one that judges them. And I just wanted to put that uh, put that in, in the air. So here he's referring to those who heard the word and do not believe they are condemned already because they did not believe in the name of the only begotten son of Elohim. And then that's why verse 19 correlates with that it says this is the condemnation that the light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil meaning that they saw the light and they love darkness instead that's different than a person who never was able to see the light i just wanted to to make sure that we um are clear on, on that type of judgment thank you brother good clarification there brother jp well, Shabbat Shalom again. Um, uh, you know, I was looking at, well, my first, I think there, I don't know if you've done a study yet, Brother Rick, um, on believed, uh, but that's like a deep word. It's it's just, there's so much, I think there's a much more than even what, it's like it's to break that down into, because it's just one of the portions of the formula that I look at um, that we need to have and, and to believe what does it truly mean? And you, you were, you know, there was a lot being touched on, but there's so, I, I think there's so much on it. If you do have a study on that, I, you know, I'm going to have to go back and look for it. <laughs> but um, what I found interesting right now, I was like, well, let me go back. And when I went back to the old Testament and I was wanting to see what the Hebrew word looked like in the, in the, you know, the, 
eventually you want to go back, back to the, the pictograph. Um, but what I found interesting is that it's the same word as, well, it's not the same word, you know? So when we have the strong concordance, it's, it's categorized in a different number, but it has the same three letters as what we were kind of discussing last night, uh, amen. Um, amen is H four five um, five four three, and it's Aleph Mem Noon. And when you go and look at the word believe, it's H five three nine and H five four zero, but they're both Aleph Mem Noon. And so that was pretty interesting. That even at the, you know, if we take away from the category, you know, what James Strong's did, and he categorized and just say, well, what are you're getting the same word. Um, except you got different vowel points, of course, that kind of, that's what the, you know, kind of categorizes it differently. But so something is there. I'm not sure. I don't want to, you know, speak ahead, but there's something there that, that really, when we say, so be it, or, you know, amen, it's the same thing as, is what they were saying when it was like, believe in how and, and all that. I, I have not, not yet to find out. So, but I just thought that was something interesting to bring up, and you know, I don't know if you you know seen that or not, but something to bring bring forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I got a couple studies on believe, uh, not necessarily on belief, but that word does link to uh, a man uh, faith. You know, those are those things you're, you're you're agreeing unto what Yahuwah is saying, basically. You know, uh, that, that's what that's what that word. I mean, I'm on, you know, uh, that's what that word means is you're in agreement, right? And to believe means you're in agreement also. You agree with what's being put before you, you know, that's what you're grabbing you're grabbing a hold of. That's what you're basing your life and your, your whole amuna, if you will, is based on that belief that you're agreeing with him, you know, and that's, that's how I think that they're linked in that sense, Um that's how I see it anyway. Maybe the other brothers can can give more clarity, like Brother Rod. Yeah, no, no. Uh, JP is definitely on the right track as far as is being more than just believe, because it, you know, or, or just an understanding of what something is. Because believing um, is acting. In other words, it requires a demonstration, just as love. Like you can't just tell your wife, JP, you love her. You have to demonstrate it. You have to show it. Believing faith requires an action that matches what you believe. You know, so it's 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 a it's an active verb that that we're using, and and that's why there is fruit attached to who we say we are, what we say we believe. There's actions that follow. So um, those words are are very important for us to understand. Um, because sometimes they, they're a little different when we think of them from the English standpoint. But Hebrews knew what that meant. <laughs> they knew that it meant that something is required to show that you truly believe. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. All right, Sister Robbie, then Brother Paul. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Yeah, I just wanted to um, ask a question in reference to what Brother Jadiel was speaking about with the unrighteous. They may not have known Yahuwah was saying that Yahuwah is going to put them in a separate category to judge them. So I would like to also find out what, let's say, for example, family members, neighbors, people that we know in general that are misled in false religion. It's like they don't know who Yahuwah is because they're misled or they don't have an understanding. Would they also too be put in that same category as being judged by Yahuwah in that sense? Sounds like that one's directed at you, Brother Jadio. Um, yeah, so according to uh, James chapter four, verse 17, James chapter four, verse 17 says, um, it says, therefore to him that knows to do good, and does not do it to him, it is sin. There's, a, there's always, a, even with baptism, like what we were talking about earlier, there's always an emphasis in understanding. So the thing is, Yah is going to judge us based off of what we know that is true. 
whether or not we went against it or not. He's not going to judge us on knowing all that is true. He's going to know, he's going to judge us on what we know to do that is good. Um, so there's a, there's that emphasis of, of whatever, there's, there's a level of understanding that many, that everybody knows, and but only Yahuwah knows who understand, who truly understands uh, those elements and who doesn't. That's why when we look at the world, we're judging them based off of a standard of a person that believes, but we shouldn't. We should judge them based off of what they know, but we can't know what they know. We are not in their hearts and minds, but we should judge one another, those who call themselves brothers, according to what they know meaning like you if you, we're walking together and we believe both that you we should keep the torah then this is how we communicate with one another hey you're not you're not living by the standard that you know to keep that's why i'm able to we're able to communicate with one another differently than with the world when you approach the world you can approach them like hey how come you're not keeping shabbat you know because they're already misled so you have to now deal with what they don't know to bring them to know something and then allow them to choose to believe and obey and things like that. So yes, they, those who are misled and truly honestly do not understand, Yah will definitely judge them according to what they know because what they know to do and they do not do it, that's sin for them. You know, so I, I, would, I would say absolutely. Hallelujah. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, thank you. That was very helpful. Thank you. All righty, Brother Paul. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Yeah, I, I was basically going to say the same. Um, we've had a couple of conversations on our Monday nights to be with JP about, um, you know, how people will be judged. Um, and I agree, you know, it. The word believer is probably the English um, version of the word, but the Hebrew word would probably give better meaning because believer is assuming that somebody knows of it and doesn't believe. Um, and I think, as it's already been pointed out, it's about our, our true understanding and we must understand things first because we might have an incorrect interpretation of what is meant and we have a belief that we're following this this way, uh, the way we interpret it, but we may be wrong. And obviously we have to, um, you know, Yahuwah knows all, so Yahuwah will judge us based on, you know, our efforts, our attempts, and, and us trying to, to keep, to seek him. But um, yeah, for me, it reminds me of like the conversations we have regarding people like who are related to us, our family, who are unaware of the name, unaware of Yahuwah and following different religions, you know, to me, they're asleep. They've been hypnotized by the world, hypnotized by Hasatan, and they're just not awake yet. So Yahuwah, you know, I, I feel won't judge them as being against him, but they're just asleep to who he is. And, um, you know, it's one that is probably close to all of us who've got family um you know who who's not aware of who our creator is so i just i'm just agreeing with what's been said so far it, it's very good and um you know it, it's important that th like our understanding may change from one time to 10 years later we might have a different deeper understanding and then we may make adjustments and changes to how we are how we act and how we be but i think the core of the Torah is is pretty straightforward to love Yahuwah and love one another. You know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just Hallelujah. Just to, just to shout out there, wake up, people. It's time to come to Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Share that light with them. Be that salt of the earth. Hey, we got to try to do what we can do with our loved ones and uh, see, like you said, you put it out there, open it up, give them an understanding if they have an incorrect understanding and they got to choose from there. So we got to do our part to try to bring some, some truth. That's our, that's our role to inspire them by our lives, you know? So they will ask questions. So thank you, brother. Sister Lydia, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. 
Um, I was wondering if we really are supposed to judge others because it says, um, do not judge lest you be judged. And I know we all are judging others, especially those that are in the um, churches and stuff, but maybe our philosophy should be more like a reproof or like a chastisement to steer them into the true way and not really try to judge them. It's not our role. It is the father's role to judge. And I know I'm guilty of judging others because, you know, you tell them the truth and, and they just, they know it. And, and even in their hearts, but they go, nah, I kind of like to do, you know, I'd still rather keep Christmas because it's fun or Easter or blah, blah, blah. And it's like, seriously, you know, it's all based on paganism and you still want to do it. Yeah. Because it's fun. So I'm kind of guilty of judging too, but I'm wondering if that's not our role, just chastisement and reproof and correction maybe should be our philosophy in life. Well, I have uh, uh, to agree with you in a lot of what you said. Um, I guess it comes down to what is judging, you know. We all judge all, all kinds of matters, you know. A situation comes up, you have to make judgments, uh, whether to do this or that, uh, to avoid something or not. Uh, we're also to uh, told to to avoid some of those matters too. So, um, you know, I guess it comes down to the word judgment because in our English language, that word again, you know, has a lot of skewed meanings and, uh, you know, what is it that we're called to do, um, you know, in, in chastising or bringing that, you know, we have to make a judgment if somebody's in error, you're making a judgment to be able to bring a truth to them. So, you know, I guess it is in the context of a, a condemning. Uh, I think that's one of the things that is uh, probably more what is links to is condemning someone um, in a, in, by judging them in that sense, you know, bringing condemnation upon them, judging, saying, you know, that they're not worthy or whatever. I don't know in that kind of sense, but I think that we have to make judgment calls uh, all the time of through our lives, um, you know, who we associate with, who we don't. So I think that's what we got to really break down more is that, that, that we're judging, but brother Jody L your thoughts on that. Yeah. So, um, the Bible doesn't say not to judge in Matthew seven, it says, judge not that you be not judged for what, what judgment you judge, you shall be judged with what measure you meet. It shall be measured again unto you. And then it tells you, it tells us, um, to actually judge the matters there's two different aspects of judgment i think you're referring to condemnation condemnation is a judgment that only yah can perform but then there's also a judgment which means to distinguish a judgment which means to decide like hey this is wrong that's the judgment in which we ought to actually make with one another keeping each other in the light, keeping each other, like what you said, but sister, uh, reproving and correction, that's a part of judgment because you are deciding that an individual is incorrect and you are making a, a, a distinguished decision to say this is incorrect and separating yourself. When you look at 1 Corinthians 5, it says in verse 13, them that are without Elohim judges, therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. That's a judgment. So you're not condemning that person, but you are separate. You are making a decision to separate yourself from an individual who is not obeying, you know? So uh, there is an element of judgment that you are making, but there is no element of condemnation that we are making because we should not condemn before the time. Yahu there's always time to repent until we're dead. That's when there is no, no opportunity to repent. So there is no opportunity to condemn a person to, to death, uh, you know, if we're not, you know, not condemn a person to like they're headed towards death. Absolutely. We should declare that a person is headed towards death, but that a person is condemned already. That's only something that Yah can make that judgment on, you know. So uh, there is two elements of judgment, uh, decision, making a decision and declaring something is right and wrong and, and declaring that someone does not have salvation and cannot receive salvation. Those are two different judgments. And I agree, we should not condemn at all. I agree, exactly what I was saying. Thank you, brother. Already, uh, Yara 
Um, and then we're just about out of time. Shabbat Shalom once again. Yes, Shabbat Shalom. And I just simply wanted to um, just chime in and say that I'm in total agreement with uh, what Brother Yadiel and you, Brother Rick, said on uh, this um, understanding, this concept of judgment. And really what it really comes down to is the difference between our understanding in the English language uh, and the philosophies of the world, as opposed to the Hebrew understanding of uh, what judgment is. Hallelujah. Well said. Thank you, sister. Brother Paul, and then I'm going to end with you, Brother Dom and Sister Mary. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom again, brother. Yeah, I, um, I agree with the sister and uh, what Brother Jadiel said. I think um, we, we make judgments on people's behavior and situations and circumstances. Judgments to sort of see if something's right or wrong or, you know, if things should be a different way. But, uh, you know, also mindful that all of us, you know, none of us have perfection and all of us, um, if we judge, we do deserve to be judged also. Um, but I think you had it right, Brother Rick, in, in the best way to say we we should lead by example and we should do our best to, you know, be out there in the world and be the best um, set apart people as we possibly can and then allow others to sort of look at us and see how our, our behavior is reflected and you know rather than correction let them see see how we do things and maybe take it in that way as it's less less conflicting and comes up against less uh, less um it's the word I'm looking for. Less resistance, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> Not that thing, Shabbat shalom. Thank you, brother. Shalom. All right, brother Dom, sister Mary. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I just wanted to um, just come into agreement with what uh, brother Jadiel said about judging. Um, in Exodus, when uh, Moses had the issue of um, he had a high um, a high workload in judging amongst the people, and his father-in-law came to him in Exodus eighteen twenty-one. And 22 and it says moreover you moreover you shall provide out of all the people able men such as fair elohim men of truth hating covetousness and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds rulers of 50 and rulers of tens and let them judge the people at all seasons and it shall be that every great matter that, that they shall bring unto you but every small matter they shall judge so it shall be easier for yourself and you shall bear the burden with you so just wanted to show scripture um, in the Torah way it was um, it was okay for for people to judge, but in Torah and in truth and righteousness. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, brother. Perfect yeah. way to end this. Uh, so thank you everybody for your input. Been a great discussion and uh, Shabbat shalom.